Hey guys! So today we're going to compare and contrast two stories. I'm going to read you two different stories. And we showed you the books yesterday, and then you guys get to tell me things that are similar, which are the same, or things that are different or contrasting. So the first book I'm going to read is called The Three Pigs. So there is no cover but that's what it looks like, called The Three Pigs. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there were three little pigs who went in, out into the world to seek their fortune. The first pig decided to build a house, and he built it out of straw. Then along came a wolf and knocked on the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. And the pig answered, Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. And the wolf said, then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So the wolf huffed and he puffed and blew the house in. And he ate up the little pig. Hey, he blew me right out of the story. Now the second little pig built his house out of sticks. Along came the wolf who knocked at the door and said, little pig, little pig, let me come in. And the pig answered, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Well, then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. Come here, it's safe out here. So the wolf huffed and he puffed and he blew the house in and ate the little pig. Hmm. The third little pig built his house out of bricks. We got away from that wolf. Good for you. Wow, why didn't you two get eaten up? Now we have room to move. Watch this. Oops, uh-oh, all the story is going away. What's happening? The pigs aren't in the story anymore. Let's explore this place. Or just let's fold this up. I'm folding up the page, and if you look, you can see it's the wolf inside the uh, brick house. Whee! Hey, wait, what happened to our story? It's like they're taking a ride on an air airplane. There they go, they're flying away. I don't what happened to this story. This doesn't remember this is maybe a little bit different than the story you might have read. Oh no. Oof. Hey, over there. Wait, what's that? I think someone's out there. Come help me with this. He's looking at you. I wonder what they're gonna pull down. Hey, diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle, and the cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed. He sees such sport, and the dish ran away with the spoon. Let's get out of here. So these pigs are ready to leave. Hmm. Well, that sure changed. They were riding around in an airplane. So the three little pigs started off the way we know it, and now it's changing. And now we are into nursery rhymes. Hmm. Where to next? This one, come on. How about here? Oops, high on a hill. And it says guard over, oh my goodness, I wonder where they're going now. There it is, it says, phew. Hold still. I wonder where they're going. They're getting into another story. High on a hill, there lived a dragon who stood guard over the rose made of the purest gold. The king was determined to own his treasure, so he sent his oldest son to slay the dragon and bring back the golden rose. Come with me. Hurry. Uh-oh. Who's coming out of the story now? Looks like they're getting rid of the, dra the dragon. And here we go. It says, the prince spurred his steed to the mountaintop, drew a sword, and slayed the mighty dragon. Many thanks for rescuing me, oh brave and noble swine. Don't mention it. So they rescued the dragon from his story. Hey, diddle diddle. Oh, there's the cat. Look who's here. Welcome. So we've got the three pigs, the cat, and now... The dragon from the story. That does not sound like the three little pig story I know. Now what? Find something. Who is this? I wonder who they're looking at. 
<clears throat> it's my place. Notice the brickwork? I did it myself. A fine castle, methinks. Yes, it's very nice. You know what? Let's go home. Good idea. We just have to pick these up. Guess they're picking up their story. Hmm. Along came a wolf who knocked on the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. And the pig answered, Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff, then I'll pluff, then I'll blow your house in, said the wolf. The wolf huffed. Then he puffed it, but no matter how much he could not blow the house. Uh-oh, who did he? Who came out of the house? A dragon. So he climbed. Nope, it says here. Okay, that's enough. Come inside, soup's on. I think I'm going to like it here. Guess they got rid of the big bad wolf one way, huh? And they all lived happily ever after the end. All right, so was this book similar to the one that you have read before, The Three Little Pigs, or the one that you heard yesterday? Because I know you heard one of The Three Little Pigs, and you had the dinosaurs. This doesn't seem like the same one either. So I want you to compare this story with The Three Little Pigs and contrast it. But I'm going to read you a second book that you're going to compare and contrast to. This is called... The True Story of the Three Little Pigs. And it is told by John Skizaks and it's illustrated by Lane Smith. So let's sit back and listen to the true story of the Three Little Pigs. Dear reader, there's obviously been some kind of mistake. It's been 10 years now since I first explained what happened to the Three Little Pigs and I'm still in my pen. Maybe the warden just hasn't had a chance to look into my whole mess yet. I'm sure everything will be taken care of once he hears my side of the story. I mean, why wouldn't I be set free? I'm a model prisoner. There was a small problem with a cake my granny sent to me. I don't know how she, how a saw got in there. It must have fallen off the tool shed into the frosting, like she said. And then she, there was that little confused little girl in the red riding hood. She saw my picture in the paper when she made up this whole tale about dressing up like Granny and scaring her with her big bad eyes. I have, and what big teeth I have, crazy. Did I do something like that? I think the answer to that is in my letters I get from all over the world. Mr. Wolf, you are innocent. Bobby Lobo, Lupine, Texas. Monsieur Wolf, you should be set free. L.A. Loop, Paris, France. That's it, the true story, 10 years later, straight from the wolf's mouth. So now you know. Maybe you could put a good word for me. Something like free a wolf. Free a wolf now. Really? A wolf. All right. So let's find out what happened. It says everybody knows the story of the three little pigs. Or at least they think they do. But I'm going to tell you a secret. Nobody knows the real story. Nobody has ever heard my side of the story. Hmm. So in the other stories... It's told by the pig. This one is told by the wolf. I'm the wolf. Alexander T. Wolf. And you can call me Al. And I don't know what this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. I mean, maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault. Wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. I mean... If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think that you were big and bad, too. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is wrong. The real story is about a sneeze, a chew, and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. Way back in Once Upon a Time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny, and I had a terrible sneeze cold and I ran out of sugar. So I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now this neighbor was a pig and he was not the brightest pig either because he had built his house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean who in their right mind builds a house out of straw? There it is, see? So of course the minute I knocked on the door 
it fell right in. And I didn't want to just walk into somebody's house that I didn't know, so I called, Little pig, little pig, are you in there? And there was no answer. I was just about ready to go home without my cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. And that's when my nose started itching and it started twitching. Well, I huffed and I snuffed. Achoo! I sneezed a great big sneeze. And you know what? That whole darn straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig. And he was dead as a doornail. And you know what? He was home the whole time. Well, it seemed like such a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying around in the straw. So I did eat it up. Think of it as a big cheeseburger just lying there. A big cheeseburger. I was hungry, so I ate it. I was feeling a little bit better, but I still didn't have a cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake, so I went to the next neighbor's house, and that neighbor was the first little pig's brother, and he wasn't too smart either. He had built his house out of sticks, so I rang the doorbell on the stick house, and nobody answered. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And he yelled back, go away, wolf. You can't come in. I'm shaving the hairs off my chinny chin chin. I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on, and I huffed and I snuffed and I tried to cover my mouth. I really did, but I sneezed a great big sneeze. Achoo! And you're not going to believe it, but this guy's house fell down too, just like his brother's. And when the dust cleared, there was a second little pig dead as a doornail. Wolf's honor. Now, you know food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open. So I did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as second helping. I was getting awful full. But my cold was feeling a little better now. And I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. And this guy was the first and second little pig's brother. He must have had the brains of the family because he built his house out of bricks. And I knocked on the brick door. No answer. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And do you know what that rude little porker answered? Get out of here, wolf, and don't bother me again. Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar, and he wouldn't even give me one little cup for my dear granny's birthday. What a pig. I was just about to go home and maybe have a nice, make a nice birthday card instead of a cake. And I felt my cold coming on again. And I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed again. And the third little pig yelled out, and your old granny can sit on a pin. Now, I'm usually a pretty calm fellow, but when someone talks about my granny like this, I go crazy. And when the cops drove up, of course, I was trying to break down the pig's door. And the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. And the rest, as they say, is history. The news reporters found out about the two little pigs I had for dinner. They figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the story with all that huffing and puffing and blowing your house down. And they made me the big bad wolf. And that's the real story. I was framed. Maybe you can loan me a cup of sugar. The end. All right, so you have two stories about the three little pigs. I want you to figure out and write down or record and tell me what was the same about the story and what was different. You can come up with as many things as you can to let me know that you listen to both stories. All right, guys, have a great day, and I can't wait to hear your answers. See you later.